Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Amon Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. Today we have Claire and the Freedom Quilt. Before I was even 12 years old, I got sent from North Farm up to Home Plantation because they needed another field hand. When I got there, I cried so much that I thought I was never going to eat or drink again. I didn't want to leave my mama. I'm going back to hell. I whispered every day to young Jack, who worked beside me in the fields. Well, you better start eating. All you can, sweet Claire. He said at me, smiling, but then his smile was gone. In a low voice, he said, or else you won't make it. Young Jack helped me believe I'd be back to my mama someday. Truth was, I'd be lost before I got through the fields. Them being so big and all, but... I didn't give up dreaming. Aunt Rachel was raising me now. She wasn't my for real blood aunt, but she did her best to care for me. One night, she came back from working in the big house and found me lying dead tired on the cabin floor. She shook her head and said, Clara, Clara, you ain't gonna lash them field, but I got an idea. Aunt Rachel's idea was something, and she started teaching me the very next night. It wasn't easy for me to learn. My hands are already rough and clumsy from hoeing and weeding in the fields. So Aunt Rachel took to it real slow. She brought scraps of cloth from the big house and taught me about each one, how it was special and had to treat it in its own way. I liked to piece the scraps together to make a pretty patterns of colors. But Aunt Rachel didn't care much about pretty patterns. You rip that whole roll and do it again, she said. Why I gotta make the stitches so tiny, I complained. You wanna be a real seamstress, that's why. Tomorrow, you coming with me to the big house. I got it all worked out. Aunt Rachel said one day, I was frightened. You ready to sew with me? Mrs. Daughter Ella be getting mad come spring. I told Mrs. I'd be needing help. She look at your work with sharp eyes, Claire. So do it quick and eat like I told you. Next morning, I tried to eat some cornbread, but my insides was all knotted up. I'd never been inside the big house before or seen white folks that close except the overseers. The morning sun was streaming into the sewing room, turning everything all sunflower yellow. Aunt Rachel gave me some sheets to him instead of being contrary. That needle did all I wanted, just like it was part of my hand. At the end of the day, Mrs. come in. Let me see your work, Claire. I gave her the sheet, and she ran it through her hands real slow. I held my breath watching. From now on, come here. When she left, Aunt Rachel and I looked at each other, and we was ready to bust. We done it, girl. So I changed from a field hand to a seamstress. Since sewing room was right off the kitchen, Aunt Rachel and I would near cook and help us. There was always lots of bustle and company in the kitchen. I was hearing about all kinds of new places and things. I listened so hard, it felt like my ears must be growing right out of my head and getting big with listening. One day, two white men come to see Master. The drivers went into the kitchen to talk to cook. There's been too many runaways last summer. They're going around asking all the masters in the country to join the patrollers. Crazy running away. Where you gonna go, step lost in the swamp? Don't know, but I hear we ain't that far from the Ohio River. Once you get that far, the Underground Railroad will carry you across. That right, the railroad get you all the way to Canada. Then you're free for help. <laughs> if it was as easy as you two led on, more would have gone. 
it'd be that easy if you could get a map. Walking back from the big house that evening, I asked Aunt Rachel about what I heard. Where's Canada? And what's the Underground Railroad? See there? That's the North Star. Under that star far up north is Canada. The Underground Railroad is a place who've been helping folks get there. Secret life. She looked at me hard. But don't you start thinking about it. You run away and get caught. You be beaten. Still, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Next day I asked, good. Those two men that was here yesterday, they was talking about a map. What's a map? Just a picture of uh, land. That's all. Whatever's on the ground, a map can have it. Sunday I went to my favorite place on the little hill. And I took a look at the people's cabin and the fields. And I took a stick and started to make a picture in the dirt of all I could see. But then I got to thinking, how could I make a picture of things far away that I couldn't see? And how could I make a map that wouldn't be washed away? A map that would show me the way to freedom. Then one day I was sewing a patch on a pretty blue blanket. The patch looked just like the shape as the cow pine near the cabins. The little stitches looked like a path going all around it. Here it was. A pitch that wouldn't wash away. A map. So I started the quill. So when you sew it, no matter how careful you be, little scraps of cloth always be left after you cut out a dress or a pillowcase. So while my ears kept listening and my hands kept sewing, I began to squirrel away these bits of cloth. When I was off work, I went to visit people in the quarters. I asked what fields was where. Then I started piecing the scraps of the cloth with the scrap things I was learning. Aunt Rachel said, Claire, what kind of pattern you making old on that quilt? Ain't no pattern I ever seen. I don't know, Aunt Rachel. I just patching it together as I go. She looked at me long, but just nodded. There was a buzzing in the quarters one summer evening. I saw the patrollers and I knew someone had ran away. It was young Jack. But five days later, they called him. That next Sunday, I went to see him and we walked to the top of the little hill. He didn't smile the way he used to. I took a stick and began to draw in the dirt. I drew a little square for the big house, a line of boxes for the cabins for the quarters, and some bigger squares for the fields east of the big house. I drew as much as I pieced together. Jack sat beside him, not saying nothing, not even looking at us. Then he started seeing what I was doing, and I handed him the stick. I hear him catch his breath. Then he began to draw. I worked on that quilt for a long time. Sometimes months would go by and I wouldn't get any pieces sewing in it. Sometimes I had to wait to get the right kind of cloth. I had blue calico and flowered blue silk for creeks and rivers. And I had green and blue green for fields and white sheets for roads. Mrs. liked to wear pink a lot, so big houses and quarters. And finally, the big house at North Farm, they was all pink. The quilt got bigger and bigger, and if folks knew what I was doing, no one said. But they came by the sun room to pass some time whenever they could. By the way, Claire, I heard that master saying yesterday he didn't want to travel to Mr. Morris's place because it's over 20 miles north of here. Or someone comes sit eating cook's food and say, so as I could hear, where it is, they gonna plant corn on the three west fields on the Verona plantation this year. When the master would go out hunting, Cook's husband was the guy. He come back and said, That swamp next to the home plantation is something nasty. But listen up, Claire. I tell you how I thread my way in and out there as smooth as your needle on that cloth. Then one night, the quilt was done. I looked at it spread out in the dim light of the cabin. 
Aunt Rachel studied it for the longest time. She touched the stitches lightly. Her fingers moved slowly over the last piece I added, a hidden boat that would carry us across the Ohio River. Finally, they came to rest on the bright star at the top. She tried to make her voice cheery. You always did like to make sweet patterns and pictures, Claire. You get yourself married to young Jack on one of these days here, yeah? and you two would have a real nice quilt to sleep under. Aunt Rachel, I couldn't sleep under this quilt. Wouldn't be restful. Anyway, I think it should stay here. Maybe others can use it. Yeah, you ain't gonna need a quilt where you going. Don't worry, Aunt Rachel. I got the memory of it in my head. It rained hard for the next three days. Me and Jack left home plantation in a dark thunderstorm. The day after, it was too stormy to work in the field, so Jack was missed. And Aunt Rachel told him I was sick. We went north following the trail of the Freedom Quilt. All the things people told me, all the tiny stitches I took, now I could see them for real. There was the old tree struck down by light, the winding road near the creek, the hunting path through the swamp. It was like being in a dream you already dreamed. Mostly we was hiding during the day and walked out night. When we got to North Farm, Jack slipped in through the darkness to find what cat my mama had. Then we went to get her and found a little sister I didn't even know I had. Mama was so surprised. Sweet Claire, you grow so big. Her eyes just like I remember. Her arms strong around me. Mama, I'm here for you. We going north. We know the way. I was afraid she wouldn't come, but then Mama said yes. Young Jack carried my sister Anna, and I held on to Mama's hand. We kept on far as we could, scudding farms and towns and making our way through the woods. At last, one clear dark night, we came to the Ohio River. The river was high, but I remember the place on the quill where I had marked the crossing. We searched the brush along the banks until, at last, we found the little boat. This was hid by the folks in the Underground Railroad. The boat carried us across the dark deep water to the other side. Shivering and hungry and scared, we stood looking ahead. Which way now? I pointed to the North Star, shining up clear above us. Up. Up there, through the woods, north to Canada. Sometimes I think back to the night we left, when young Jack came to wake me. I can still see Aunt Rachel sitting in her bed, shook her head before I could say a word. Before you go, just cover me with your quill. I'm too old to walk, but I'm not too old to dream. And maybe I can help others follow the quill to freedom. Aunt Rachel kept her word. The quill is still there at home plantation. People go look at it, even folks from neighboring farms. I know because some of them come and tell me how they used it to get free. But not all are so lucky as we were. And most never do come. Sometimes I wish I could sew a quilt that would spread over the whole land. And the people just follow the stitches to freedom. As easy as taking a Sunday walk. The End Wow, so that was an awesome story. A um, little bit longer, but it's the season opener, so what do you expect? Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt is the original name um, by Deborah Hopkinson, uh, based on a story from her family, I believe. Um, if you remember season four in you remember I did a story called The Runaways. And they were trying to get over the Ohio River. I, in, in, in my um, multiverse, in, in my universe of these stories, sometimes I want to put stories together. And I really feel like Clara's quilt led to the boat that 
was used in the story The Runaways. If you don't remember that story, if this is your first time listening, go back to The Runaways story in season four and listen to that story. And when you get to the ending of it, you'll see why I think that this boat here is the same boat, right? Probably not, but feels like it. Freedom quilts are a real thing. A lot of them have different meanings, um, even just superstitious meanings as far as like uh, if you see turkey um, feet or um, they call it they call it the wandering feet pattern would be a if you gave it to a boy and he was asleep under he would become a wanderer in life or you had military quilts you had um, friendship rings that were done by um, quilting bees uh, uh, if you're in a quilting bee or if you know somebody in a quilting bee they know exactly what this is and what I'm talking about you have um, signature um, album or autograph quilts where um, people in a quilting bee would, if somebody was leaving, they would give each other um, special patches with their name, initials, you know, dates on them. Qu quilts are awesome. You know, I, I love them. They're comfortable. They're, they're wonderful things. Freedom quilts were something far more. This whole story de describes how a freedom quilt was made and how people would see them along the path to the Underground Railroad. People would hang these quilts on their lines and in doorways and when they would visit each other and they would give messages, coded messages on how to get to where they need to go. And so to just have a story that comes from one of those families that were able to use, not even just use it, but to really pass down this message through the generations and say, this is how we got our freedom. This is the plantation we were at, and this is what I did. And I also helped many others get freedom because of it. This story was written in memory of Mrs. Hopkinson's father and mother. And for Emma Ransom, the first slave, Patty and General Matt W. Ransom and all the other Ransom slaves at the Verona Plantation. And if you want to visit the Verona Plantation, I don't know if it's still standing, but it is in North Carolina. This is an awesome story. I love it. And I thank you for joining me on the new season. Chef has a new batch of recipes for you. So go see him. See what he has for you today. Don't forget about him, okay? Because he does not forget about you. Until next time, as always, be blessed. Welcome, my friends, to the galley. I am your chef, Chef, and today we have a wonderful recipe inspired by the story you have just heard. We travel to Calabash, North Carolina for the Calabash Shrimp. Now, what will you need for this dish? Vegetable oil for frying, of course. Two large eggs that you will lightly beat. One cup of evaporated milk. One cup of self-rising flour. Half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Three quarters teaspoon of black pepper. A quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. Two pounds, that is two pounds of large shrimp peeled and deveined. Now, how do we put this dish together? Easy. In a Dutch oven or as a large pot if you do not have a Dutch oven. Pour oil to about halfway. 
heat over a medium heat until a deep fry thermometer registers 350 degrees. If not, a little trick I learned growing up was take a little bit of the flour, sprinkle it in the oil, and if it fries immediately, it is roughly ready. And then set a wire rack over a rimmed baking sheet. This is for draining the oil. Now, in a shallow bowl, whisk to gather the egg and evaporated milk lightly though, okay? In a separate shallow bowl, whisk together the flour, the garlic salt, the pepper, and paprika. Work in batches. Dip the shrimp in the egg mixture, letting the excess drip off, then dredge it in the flour mixture. Then you will simply fry until golden brown. This takes roughly three to four minutes. Let it drain on the prepared rack. And that is it, my friend. A very simple dish to start off this wonderful new voyage. This dish goes great with a cocktail sauce. But if you do not have any, I have something for you. Now, this is what you will do. You will take about half a cup of ketchup, right? Two tablespoons of horseradish. Don't tell everybody I tell you this, okay? One tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. And one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And no one knows how to say it correct. And that is it, my friend. We are done. Now, you, go, do what you do. Make this recipe yours. Let me know how it comes out. And until I have another wonderful recipe for you, remember Sweet Clara and her freedom quilt. So until next time, enjoy. Thank you for joining us on this voyage. Thanks to Art by Chalet for the logo, episode, and t-shirt designs. You may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com. You can contact me on all socials at AfroTalesCast. That's Afro, T-A-L-E-S, cast. And email me at AfroTalesPodcast at Yahoo.com. You may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone, giving a thumbs up, or rating in your podcast app of choice. If you wish to donate, I am on Patreon and Coffee.com. That's K-O-F-I.com. So, until we meet again, may your winds be fair and your seas follow.